All right. Well, happy 2013 to everyone from Southern Woods and Waters. We hope you're set back in your easy chair on a th- beautiful Thursday night. And I just, Ron House went running through and said, I said, two to three inches. He said, more than that. And I was like, oh, no. So, Fisherman, we got to we gotta hold on just a little bit longer before we get that cabin fever. And I know the temperature rising, that makes you want to get out there anyway. Deer season is officially closed for Tennessee, but yet we do have a youth hunt this weekend here in Tennessee. But uh, for most of us, it's over. It's time to break out the rods and reels, clean those reels, get new line put on them. I know you're thinking about plenty of crappie and bass fishing on the way, and hopefully your 2013 is going to feel like an abundance of both. Uh, throw in some catfish and some trout in that too, and, and you're going to have a great, great year. I just know it. Hey, let me tell you who I got with us tonight. This is my good friend, and he is always Johnny on the spot for this show, and that's Bobby Wilson. And, Bobby, let's uh, let's introduce Bobby out here. Bobby Wilson, thank you, Bobby, for coming back on here again. Oh, that's my pleasure. He is the f- head fisheries man for the whole state of Tennessee for Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency. And Bobby is a... Uh, You've been doing this a long time, though, Bobby. And, and, and you've been with TWRA a long time. Oh, and, I have been. And, and uh, uh, now fisheries, we got some things going on. Right. Uh, you know, and, and I'm looking forward to some of the changes that we that y'all have made. Now, when did all this happen? Uh, was it back in October? Or right. The y'all com- had the meeting? We had the meeting, the commission meeting, at the towards the end of October, and they mm-hmm. voted in our new changes in the fish regulations. And these changes take place March 1st, right, March of, 1st. of this year. Right. So tell us what they are. I mean, there's just a couple of significant ones. Right. I, this, a lot of them are minor, and they don't apply to Middle Tennessee. They may be East Tennessee or West Tennessee. But the ones that apply for statewide, uh, in particular, is the, the Alabama rig. Yeah. The, the concern about that. We had a lot of calls about this time last year. I know you did. Ooh, and and uh, so we wanted to address our regulation because it's very confusing. And that was most of the reason we had the calls were because people were confused right. about the regulation, what's legal, what's not. So we wanted, number one, to, to clear that up, make it easier for folks to understand. Right. And then the other thing was we also uh, had a statewide interview from our crew clerks of all the bass fishermen that they encountered mm-hmm. during the month of of April and, and even part of March and part of May, we interviewed 1,300 bass anglers to ask them their opinion about the Alabama rig or the umbrella rig or how they felt about it. And and uh, we didn't know what, we, what to expect, especially based on the calls we got. Right. But uh, it turned out that it was about half of the fishermen, the bass anglers, thought that the Alabama rig should be legal and the other half thought it should be illegal. Okay. So that didn't help us much. <laughs> it still kept you right. up. It did. <laughs> but what we ended up doing with, at our biologist meeting, we, we came up with a couple ideas. We talked about it for several hours. And I think to keep it simple, we decided to go with three hooks per rod. And that could be single hooks, double hooks, or treble hooks per rod. Period. Okay. okay. That means if you have an Alabama-type uh, array with five arms, uh, you can only have three Three hooks, period. No matter Three how you do period. it. But the other, sometimes they put like those single hooks on the the, the lures, and then they, they we can still use. or now they can use the dummy lures on the other two where they couldn't before. Right. So we can have what we call two flashers yeah. and three swim baits. Right. Okay. Exactly. So, swim baits. Uh, uh, can they put as long as it's got one hook? Um, it's legal if you just have three. Correct. Three total. Three total hooks. Um, but you can have like a spinnerbait. If right. it has two willow leaves and, and a, as long as it's a single hook, right. you can have three of those on the same rig. That's correct. Okay. That's what we're. That's what I thought when I read it, uh, after talking to you, when I read it, it that was what I got from yep. it. Pretty the simple. The only thing is, <clears throat> and I told you we need to bring this out, the sabiki rig and the piscatory rig right. that they use uh, to catch uh uh, shad, and, shad and, and skipjack, uh, skipjack and, stuff right. like that. Those are still legal because they're yep. under the. Well, we the made hook it. Size? No, no, right? we made it. There's no such thing as hook size. Okay. We did away with that. Did away with. We just size. made an exception for the sabiki rig and the piscatory rig. Okay. We just sp- specifically stated in there except for that, and then we described what that is. That's right. And so people. Matter of fact, y'all even drew a picture of it. I and, think and, it, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and showed what it is. So right. that was great, and so. 
every the Alabama rig. We can still use the Tennessee rig, right. which is three. Correct. Now you can use the Alabama rig as long right. as you just have three hooks on there, and you can have two flashers. It can be a wool leaf blade. It can be anything. As long as it doesn't have a hook, right. uh, you're legal. That's correct. And uh, the only thing you use five on or, or more than three is the Sabiki or the Piscatory rig. And that's, that's right. And it's spelled out because I read it. It's spelled out, and that's, that's great. Yeah, there's about... 20 other states in the country that have a, re a regulation similar to that. Didn't realize that yeah. until after we had already had ours or, or voted to have ours in place and, and I looked at a survey and it was surprisingly a lot of states that have that regulation of three hooks per rod or some have two hooks per rod. Bobby, that's a great question. You bring up a great point. Does Tennessee kind of, does it, does it like to follow the guidelines of any certain state or, or no, we lead the nation. We lead the nation, we don't do. we? Heck yeah. That's just what I thought. I mean, we got the man with the plan. Right well, here. I mean, we're the first state to stock crappie. Uh, right. We're one of the first states to have that regulation like we have at Dell Hollow on the smallmouth bass. Right. It's a, it's a very uh, unique kind of regulation, but it promoted the trophy status of smallmouth at Dell Hollow. It sure is. So we've got the reputation, or Dell Hollow does, for being a world-class smallmouth bass fisherman. It is. It, it is. It is, yeah. Uh, and we got some other sleepers that are coming on for strong, too. Yeah. Uh, Nicky Jack, buddy, is one we better be looking at very yeah. shortly because uh, I've heard I've got some great pictures to start showing. Good. Coming from Nicky Jack on some monster smallmouth and big largemouth. So, uh, so we got some sleeper uh, lakes out there. And, and the thing is, I think 2013 is going to be one of the better years for fishing. I think ever. it is, too. Yeah. I predict it will be. Somebody already caught a, a 13 and a half pound bass out of Lake Graham. That's what Tennessee. I was going to tell you. Yeah. yeah, that was almost awesome. 13 and a half. Yeah, for, it was it just like just a couple of ounces being 13 and a half. Wasn't right. It? Yes. That was that's big huge. Fish. I saw a picture of it. I thought it was about a 16 pound. The way it looked, yeah. it was a big fish. It's all in how you hold it up to the camera, yeah, right. Bobby. Yeah, right. I know. I know. <laughs> I'm gonna have to get you to hold them closer. Yeah. Before. <laughs> but I tell you what, Bobby does such a great job, along with many, many others at Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency. Uh, I try to get Todd St. John to come on here with you to talk about some of these things, but uh, uh, I don't know what happened to Todd. He's <laughs> but busy. He's busy. Yeah. But, you know, we got, uh, there's a, uh, I want to also say that Todd uh, gave me another guy to talk to, TWRA. Uh, they are re wanting uh, cinder blocks. Mm -hmm. So if, if you're out there and not only do they want your Christmas trees uh, to put out for uh, some of the, uh, beds and everything they, they put out structure for uh the fish but not only they want christmas trees but if anybody knows of where you can get cinder blocks uh some where they've torn a building down or something like that twra would love to know about that and, and you can contact todd st john and the other guy is uh was it pat black pat black yeah, okay pat black that's right yeah. pat black would love to have some cinder blocks and they're going to make some uh like shelves for the smallmouth to spawning get up on the, for spawning beds. That's right. right. Yeah. So, so if you know somebody that's got something like that, it'd be a great thing for us. Uh, we're gonna take a quick break now. Let me say this: when we come back to our next segment, we're gonna go ahead and open up our phone lines. We'll give you that number in the, at the beginning of the second segment. But what I want you to understand is we're gonna talk about a hot topic. Bobby and I are gonna lead you into the Corps of Engineers is proposing to close the tailwaters and headwaters of all of the Cumberland River system for hundreds of yards is what it says. So uh, hurry back with more of Southern Woods and Waters. This segment is being brought to you by Stan Sloan Zora Bait Company, where setting the hook is an everyday thing. This segment is being brought to you by Fate Sanders Marina. Come by and check out the jewel of Percy Priest Lake. All right, this week's picture is being brought to you by Flowers Deer Processing. Uh, let me tell you something. Uh, you have got to come by February 8th, 9th, and 10th. Mark it down on your calendar. Flowers is going to be presenting a new item, ladies and gentlemen, at the at the National Fairgrounds at the deer sh uh, at the fishing show. So be there to see what Flowers is coming up with next. All right, our pictures here are. Uh, this is. Uh, this is from uh, Logan Williams. This is a photo of my father, Kenny Williams, and me with a few of a crappie we caught out of the Cumberland River this weekend in Hartsville. 
great day of fishing. We love your show, and I would love to have some of those crappie, wouldn't you, Bobby? Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. Our next picture here is this is caught in December. I was telling you about this on Nickajack Lake. This is a large mouth caught by Mason Nunley. Mason Nunley, I'm sorry. Eight pounds, four ounces. That is a nice, nice fish. Our third picture here, this is a Nickajack Lake fish, large mouth. Ten pounds, two ounces. Caught on a Lucky Craft RC 1.5 crankbait. This is Stacy Nunley, his brother. Wow. And then I want to show you one other here. This is Nickajack Lake. Now listen to this. Eight pounds, nine ounce smallmouth. Caught by Josh Nunley, which is Stacy's son. Now let me tell you something. If you want to go fishing over there, call the you, you better call the Nunleys. <laughs> hey, I'll tell you what. You can send your pictures to us here at Southern Woods and Waters, 474 James Robinson Parkway in Nashville, Tennessee, 37219, or simply email them to me at hugh at southernwoodsandwaters.com. We'll get them on here really, really, really fast for you. But uh, just I had to show those pictures to get that cabin fever started. I love it when that cabin fever gets about 104, 105. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And when you're looking at big ones like that, it's time to go. It is. I mean, if they went in December, it was cold. Yeah, it was. And an eight pound nine ounce smallmouth. That's oh my amazing. stars! That's Tennessee, though. That's Tennessee. Yeah. I'm telling you, Bobby. Good we've fish got man. some sleeper lakes in this state. Yeah. Uh, you got Lake Graham for your largemouth, but man, when you're going to Nickajack and catching eight and a half pound smallmouth, yeah, you you can't. I mean, they. Some states up north don't even have fish that big for their state record. Well, look at uh, was it uh, Erie and, and them? Right. You know, the yeah. average fish is is just like four pounds. Right. Uh, ours is much more than. Oh that. yeah, longer growing season. Longer better, growing better season. Better conditions. Good. Better fish management. It, it is better fish management. Better fish management. They got <laughs> the the best forage in the world to eat here yeah. on our lakes. Uh, I was listening to a couple of them talking about they had just introduced the alewife to some places up north, mm. and oh my gosh, you need to follow Tennessee. We've we've had those for years, yeah. <laughs> and so. But I'm telling you, we got. I think 2013 is going to be the best year ever for fishing. Maybe it's the year they break the state record largemouth. I hope so. I'd like to be the one that does it. Mm -hmm. We do. do. No, I do. <laughs> Nobody would believe me. They think they would believe us if we it told them. Something, yeah. Hey, let me tell you, we have got a hot topic going on right now. Bobby and I are in the middle of, and you can call us here six one five seven three seven 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 six seven. But I want to read this to you. Okay, this came directly from the Corps of Engineers, U.S. Army Corps of Engineers website. Um, this was released on the thirteenth of December which has made it kind of a hot deal. Now, this has been going on for a while, mm. but they just recently put it in the limelight for all to see. And let me read it to you. Um, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers Nashville District is finalizing plans to implement a 24-hour-a-day, seven-day-a-week restricted waterborne access to hazardous waters immediately upstream and downstream of all core owned locks and dams, flood control dams, and multi-purpose dams on the Cumberland River and its adjoining tributaries. This action moves the Nashville District into full compliance with the core regulations. Let me explain. The public inform There is some public information meetings that are being planned for Paducah, Kentucky, Nashville, Tennessee, Cookville, Tennessee, and Somerset, Kentucky in January. These meetings will allow the public to respond to the proposed implementation plans. Detailed information for each meeting's time and location will be provided to the public as soon as they are finalized. We do have some of those for you uh, tonight. These restricted areas will be the minimum area allowed per core regulation upstream and downstream of locks, dams, and power plant facilities. All forms of water access within the restricted areas will be prohibited, including boating, swimming, and wading. The Corps continues to allow bank fishing in all areas that were previously approved, including areas adjacent to some restricted areas. The restricted areas will be small areas compared to the entire tailwater below the dams on federal property. 
fishing and boating will still be allowed in these non-restricted areas. Now, it, it goes on to say, and, and uh, this this was passed back in 1996, I believe, is, is when this uh, was passed originally by the Army Corps of Engineers when they made it into their federal guidelines for for uh, power plants and, and dams and, and for the tributaries of the Cumberland River. Now it's taken them 17 years or better to implement this here, and I wanted to say that uh, this we've got a new a new sheriff in town, and it's Lieutenant Colonel uh, Delap is his name and he has come to town and he is his sole job or not sole job but his number one priority is to uh, restrict the fishermen's access from a boat for the tailwaters and headwaters and in this letter it says for hundreds of yards it does not specifically say okay for a hundred yards it doesn't say for 200 yards it says for hundreds of yards so we don't even know what that is about but let me tell you, Bobby and I want to ask you one thing, and it is this, this fishing below the tailwaters, <clears throat> it, Bobby, is probably some of the better fishing. I mean, a lot of people go there to catch mm -hmm. striper and catfish and skipjack for their for running catfish trot lines and jugs and everything. And it's got that is kind of a, a go-to place. Mm -hmm. And now... It's getting taken away from us, right? It's, it's seasonally. It's it can be the best fishing in the whole yeah. lake. Or, That's right. Or, and um, there's a lot of good fishing. We stock a lot of fish that end up below those dams. Below those dams. Like striped bass and sauger and walleye and and uh, of course there's catfish that we don't stock, but they end up there. And those are the some of the best fishing in the whole river system. And it's, it does have a monetary impact on our. Uh, communities, right. it, it does, and, and I, this, I don't think that none of this has been even thought about. It's just uh, the way it is. But hey, we've opened up our phone lines. We have Jim. Jim, how can we help you tonight? Hi, you. Yes, sir. Hey, Jim, how you doing, buddy? Well, I'm back from Florida. I got a question. All right. Uh, hope y'all had a nice holiday season. We did, Jim, and hope you had a good time with your grandkids. I did. I enjoyed it. But <laughs> why, in the first place, are we doing this? I've, I've heard they're doing it, but I haven't heard a reason as to why we're doing it. And number two, when I lived in Florida for 16 years, they did the same thing when they had all these apartments around these canals and stuff in South Florida, and the canal or the apartment owners wanted to rope them off to keep fishermen out. But our tax dollars and our license fees are the ones that paid for access to the ramps. So, and the, the FWR down there said, hey, if it's accessed by you, you can cross them ropes. Now, all of a sudden, y'all talking about blocking off the dams and nobody's saying why we're doing it. Is it a safety concern? That's what they're saying, Jim. And, and, and let me... Um, well, I'm gonna get off and let you talk, Bob. Okay. Here, here's here's what they're saying, and, and thank you, Jim, for that. Uh, here's what they're saying. We understand the tight and restricted areas in the Nashville District may be unpopular, but it is necessary for the district to enforce a more restricted policy that complies more effectively with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, their Chapter 10. Chief uh, said Freddie Bell, chief of the Natural Resource Management Branch. The increased restriction will also provide the highest level of public safety and address physical security issues. That That's a separate issue. Mm -hmm. Since 2009, three fatalities, one serious injury, and ten near misses have occurred in hazardous waters immediately downstream of dams on the Cumberland River and its adjoining tributaries. Life jacket wear has been ineffective in these areas since all of the victims who drowned were wearing a life jacket. Okay, Here, here's my question. You got ten near misses, how did they get out? They were wearing life jackets. Mm. You can say what you want to, but those life jackets work. And, and I'd lots rather be fishing with them than without them. I mean, you're more or less saying it doesn't matter if you got one or not. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Now, the, the deal, Bobby, you and I recognize is because of 9-11-2001, every dam across the nation is a, a, a terrorist target, mm -hmm. or could be. And they, if you'll remember, they shut off a lot of accesses, and you guys were there. Mm -hmm. They shut off a lot of accesses to dams. Um, but that has kind of been raised from an orange level to a yellow, uh, where access has been allowed again. So it's kind of they keep giving and taking and giving and taking. And I, we understand the security reasons, but that's not what this says. It says it's because of the, the near misses and stuff. Right. It's not something that just happened since they no. built, built those dams back in the 40s and 50s. People have gone and fished below those dams generations have. It's tradition. It's become a tradition. They spent their lives down there. Yeah. And some people don't like to fish anywhere but below the dams. That's exactly right. Hey, we got Brandon. Brandon, how can we help you tonight? Yes, sir. How are y'all? Just great, Brandon. Good, good. I don't really have a hunting question. I'm just, uh, I'm 25, and I'm, I'm getting started in taxidermy. Yeah. And uh, I was just wondering if maybe y'all could help me uh, with some good advice on the best business way to get started uh, to do that as a living. Uh, Brandon, my, my deal would be uh, to enter contests like the, the National Wild Turkey Federation has a great contest every year for taxidermists. And let me tell you something, those guys that win first and second place, they get bombarded with uh, business right after that. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 coming to uh, uh, TWRA scores uh, deer heads uh, at some of these events, some of these uh, shows and things, that's a great place to put a deer head in and let people see your work and uh, stuff like that. And you guys... Also, every show y'all go to, you, you display all kinds of uh, mounted heads and mm -hmm. stuff. So it's a great avenue if you can get with TWRA uh, to do something like that. Fish. We got a fishing show coming up in February. We got one this weekend, a boating show. Um, that's a great place to show off if you do fish taxidermy also. Mm -hmm. And all people right. like that. People like to see good work, and they don't mind paying for that good work. So appreciate that, Brandon. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We got to uh, first, <laughs> Bobby, we got to do our product of the week. So let's, let's do, it. do it first, All okay? Right. Southern Woods and Waters product of the week brought to you by FowlQuest. All right, welcome back. And this week's product of the week is, you know, Bass Pro Shops puts out some very, very nice reels. A lot of great, great reels. The Johnny Moore signature reels and things like that. But they have a new one, brand new for 2013. It's called the Bionic. And it is a beautiful little reel. It's very low profile. I've got this one right here in a 7 1 to 1. And let me tell you something, it is a mall digger. This thing will bring it fish. And especially in a tournament situation, you know, guys might like to have that fight, that, that fish fight. But if you're in a tournament, uh, you want him in the boat mm -hmm. fast as possible. That's a great, great reel right here. They are that not that expensive. They are a great reel, but it's got, I love the, the uh, spool inside. Easy cast, just a great, great buy for the money. Bass Pro Shops, the new 2013 Bionic Reel. Check them out over there at Opry Mills. All right, and we, we got to hurry up and take another break. Keep on the phones. Keep on the phones. We'll be right back with more of the Corps of Engineers closing your dams in Southern Woods and Waters.